I hope you've been enjoying the series. It's been called uh, How Sweet the Sound. I almost forgot what it was. And we started several weeks ago, and we looked, first of all, at uh, the song Amazing Grace written by John Newton. And if you missed any of those services, I would really encourage you to go back. What we talked about is some of the old hymns and the theology and the background behind the writing of that. And then the second week, Andrew did a great job talking about Horatio Spatford, where he lost his four children on that, crew, on that uh, ship that uh, sank, and he wrote the song, It Is Well With My Soul. And then Anita talked about uh, Joseph Scriven and what a friend we have in Jesus. <clears throat> and then last week, Pastor Tim did a great job with the Jack in the Box and also with Albert Brumley on I'll Fly Away, right? Did you enjoy those? I hope you did. And if you didn't watch them, go back and see them. So much, of what, so much of what we know as a Christian has been ingrained in our hearts, in our soul, and in our minds by the songs that we have been singing through the years. How many of you remember back in the day, funeral fans? How many of you? Just raise your hand. I want to see who I can identify with this morning. All right. For those of you that don't know what a funeral fan is, this is an example of a funeral fan. And this is before, uh, this is BAC, <laughs> before air conditioning, all right? In little country churches or wherever we were, <clears throat> you'd be worshiping and sweat running down your arm and just really hot. So you'd pop out the funeral fans in the back of the chair. We have tithe envelopes now. We have to pull the funeral fan out. You just uh, fan, you know, wherever, <laughs> wherever you, you, you need to fan. And, uh, and uh, we'd sing those songs. In fact, uh, just some of you that uh, bring back the old time, if you'd like a funeral fan, I got a few to pass out. So if you'd like a funeral fan this morning, just raise your hand and we'll be happy to give you one. I hope we got enough. We probably don't have enough for everybody. But you remember the funeral fan? I think tent yeah. Meetings. How much? Tent meetings. Tent meetings. That's right. In the old tent meetings, a funeral fan. So uh, we have this one. This is uh, from Byers. You know, can you imagine you're in church worshiping God, talking about, and then all you see is Byers, funeral home, and crematory. Umatilla, Lady Lake, Villages, Leesburg, Astor, Bushnell. Ooh. And I guess there was a, a reason to that. It's sort of like, you better get ready because you're going to die. And so here we are. And it's a funeral fans. So we, we had funeral fans. There's some fun things. And then how many of you ever uh, were, you were ever in a service and had a hanky wave? Yeah. Raise your hand high. All right. Raise your hand high. Oh, a few more. So, here, so here's what would happen. You'd be in a, a <laughs> I love this team. You'd be in a service. This is, this is old school. You wonder how we ever endured, all right? Uh, but they'd, they'd be happy in a time of rejoicing, and they'd say, okay, let's have a hanky wave. And uh, last time I remember that, I was preaching. It was like a 10,000-seat auditorium, and it was in the round. And uh, they had a worship service. It was a really great enjoyment. People got out. And you always hoped that you weren't by somebody that just used it for a snot rag, right? And, uh, and, and a hanky wave. And I thought, a hanky wave, that's really, that's kind of silly, really, when you think about it. But really, it has roots back into the Old Testament in which they had banners. And even today, some people who do uh, contemporary dance in church, they have the uh, uh, banners and they have what is streamers and, and all that sort of stuff and flags, all sort of the same thing of, of being, bringing honor and glory to God and doing those things. So I don't know if we'll go back to the funeral fans or a hanky wave. I'm, I'm really not sure. But those were the old days. And we laugh at them and we poke fun at them. But the amazing thing about a lot of those songs that we sang and a lot of the songs we sing today, because of our familiarity and our repetition, we remember the words. I was raised in a little country church, and we sang the same four songs over and over and over, right? And I can remember page 100, We Shall See the King. Page 28 is, uh, I Will Not Be Denied, I, I, all of those songs. Let me give you some examples of how good your memory is. Finish this song. Jesus loves me, this I know. What can wash away my sin? Here's a tricky one. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. How about this one? Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way, Lord. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Right, wow. Here's another one. My hope is built on nothing less Jesus' blood and righteousness. How about this one? We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Oh, 
you guys are great. You guys are so great. This must be the old group here today. <laughs> and then we'll sing this one today at the end of the service. This probably is one of our favorite ones. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Here's what I'd like for you to think about. What's your song? All of those songs that we've been studying in this month were written out of a time of crisis or a time of jubilation. Think about this. Because I'm going to ask you to share this with your neighbor, so really think about it. Get some serious thought. Of all the Christian inspirational songs that have ever been written, which one would you choose as a song you would have liked to have said, I wrote that song? Uh, what, what would that be? Uh, and, and you may not know the word. Somebody said, well, I remember some of the phrases, but I don't remember the title. That's okay. You can do the same thing. For me, it would be an old song by, uh, by Dottie Rambo entitled, uh, Sheltered in the Arms of God. The reason that song would have been one that I wish I could have written is that when I was in the darkest point of my life, lost everything, everything in an upheaval, not even sure of what's going on in my life, feeling alone and isolated and lonely, that song spoke to me because the Lord took me to Psalm 91 and had me to memorize Psalm 91 as a psalm that brought me through those dark times. Listen to the words of this song, just part of it. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in paths that I must try. I'll have no fear, for Jesus walks beside me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Here's the chorus. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me, for I'm sheltered within the arms of God. He walks with me. And no, uh, no evil shall harm me, for I am sheltered in the arms of God. So, do you have it? Would you, would you stand with me? And uh, I, really, I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go share with somebody and say, if I could have written any song, here's a song that I would have written, and here's the why that I have, would have written that song. So would you do stand and go ahead and share that with somebody right there. Just go ahead. If you're watching online, just share with somebody around.
in just the known of what we know God but we know that there are so many different facets to who you are and we want to experience we want to taste we want to see we want to feel we want to smell we want to smell all of you father we want to see your power to see For you, the demons run and flee at the mention of the name King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. The great I am. The great.
just really feel as we begin to sing that, that there are some of you here in the room that all week you have been fearful of something, of something. Does anybody identify with that, that you've been fearful of something? God wants you to know that there is nothing more powerful than who he is. There is nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. Listen to me, you have nothing to fear. I'm gonna say it again. You have nothing to fear. Nothing and no one can stand against your God. So Father, let confidence rise. Let confidence rise right here in the room. Come on, let's sing this out, the mountains. The mountains shake before you. The demons run and flee. At the mention of your name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. The great I am. The great. God says, I have broken it off of you. Do not pick it back up. In the name of Jesus. Hey, just remain standing for just a moment. We've been talking a lot about old songs and songs in our past that, that we've sung. Uh, you know what I find that's very interesting in the Bible? Never once does it say, sing an old song. Never says singing. Now, there's nothing wrong with singing old songs. But what God is saying is, I don't have to remind you to sing old songs. Because old songs are familiar. In fact, you can be so familiar with a song that you sing it with your mouth, but your heart and your mind is in a different place. Anybody ever done this besides me? Open confession here, open mic. I'm singing a song, and then I'm thinking, now where did Anita say we was going for lunch today? <laughs> and uh, where, where are Jill and Bob? I don't see them today. And uh, where is uh, Andrew? And, uh, and, and I catch myself, and I'm thinking, I'm singing to him with my mouth, but not with my heart. So he says to us, I want you to sing a new song. In fact, that phrase is over and over. We're going to look at it in just a minute in Isaiah 42. But before we do, before you sit down, I want you to read this with me because Psalm, uh, the book of Psalm is so full of this sing a new song. But I want to read this one, Psalm 96 from the message. I love this. So, so let's say it with, say, read this with some gusto, okay? Ready? Here we go. Sing God a brand new song. Earth and everyone in it sing. Shout the news. Take the news of his glory to the lost. News of his wonders to one and all. For God is great and worth a thousand hallelujahs. His terrible beauty makes the gods look cheap. Pagan gods are mere tatters and rags. God made the heavens. Royal splendor radiates from him. A powerful beauty sets him apart. Bravo, God, bravo. Everyone join in the shout. Encore in all before the beauty, in all before the might. Bring gifts and celebrate. 
bow before the beauty of God. Then to your knees, everyone worship. Get out the message. God rules. He put the world on a firm foundation. He treats everyone fair and square. Let's hear it from the sky with earth joining in and a huge round of applause from the sea. Let wilderness turn cartwheels, animals come dance, put every tree of the forest in the choir, an extravaganza before God as he comes, as he comes to set everything right on earth, set everything right, treat everyone fair. Let's give him a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your participation today. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 42. I want to I look at this phrase today, sing a new song. And so I, I'm looking out of Isaiah chapter uh, 42. I'm going to begin reading at verse 10, but then I'm also going to come back in verse 9 in a minute. So go ahead and keep your place there, all right? Um, in, in fact, on verse 10, read the first part of that out loud with me. Are you ready? Here we go. Go. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise from the ends of the earth. Now, he says, you go down to the sea and all that's in it, you coastlands, inhabitants of them. Let the wilderness and the, and the uh, cities lift up their voice. The villages uh, that Kedar inhabits and the inhabitants of Selah sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Look at that. Read verse, uh, begin to verse 12 with me. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. And then look at this verse 13. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. Read the last phrase with me. He shall prevail against his enemies. This is a powerful passage. And I, I hope you go back this afternoon and reread uh, Isaiah chapter 42 because it's very, very intriguing. So here it is. It says, sing a new song. Now, when it says new here, it doesn't mean something that's just been uh, recently written. Or it doesn't mean, I, I can't think of any other lingo, and this is outdated. It's not really something hip. You don't, Carrington, you don't say hip anymore, do you? That's, you hip? Okay, great. So I can say hip, all right? So it's really not hip. It's not the hip thing that just came out or the most recent. But he says, I want you to sing a new song, not like something just freshly written. The Hebrew word is hadash. Say that with me, hadash. Now you know a little Hebrew, so when you go for Hebrew sausages, you know what to say, hadash. <laughs> the word there, hadash, means this, fresh. Something that's been rebuilt. Something that is renewed. So when he says to them, sing a new song, he's saying, I want you to sing a fresh song to the Lord. I want you to sing a renewed song to the Lord. See, some of us that are here today, we've sort of lost our song. Difficulties and trials and troubles and storms have come our way. And it's like we, we would like to sing, but we've sort of lost our voice, and we don't know how to sing. Difficulty has come our way. We've been hurt. We've been offended. Somebody rejected us, turned us aside, and we've lost our song. But he says, no, wait. I want you to sing a renewed song. From down in the inside of you, I want something to be new and refreshing and to sing a fresh song to the Lord. Now, let's look at this. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea, let the wilderness, the cities lift up their voices. And look at verse 13. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud, and he shall prevail against his enemies. So when we look at that, let me put it in context for you so it makes a little more sense. God's people, Israel, were in a tough time. They've had storms. They've had difficulties. They went away from God. They'd worship God one week, and they'd worship something else the next week, and they found themselves in captivity. They found themselves in, a, in such a place that they were crying out to God in the previous chapters, oh God, could you do a new thing in our life? This old thing is destroying us. 
I wonder how many today, by just raising the hands, and I'll be the first one, that there's areas in your life where you just say, Lord, I'd really like for you to do a new thing in that area of my life. Maybe it's healing. Maybe it's in your marriage. Something new, Lord. Something new. Not something old, but I, I need something new and fresh and rebuilt and redone. So they were praying for that. And so the Lord says to them, I want you to sing a new song. So as they sing this new song, the scripture says, then the Lord rouses himself, he gets up, and he goes forth as a mighty man of war, and he destroys the enemies that are coming against them. Now, we don't, you got to realize this, God and the devil are not in a war. You understand that? The war has already been ended. When Jesus said, it is finished, he's saying, that's it. The enemy's power has been destroyed. But now that doesn't mean that he doesn't try to come against us. Some of you this week, he's hit you with things. And some of you in your family, it's just like boom and boom and boom and boom. And you wonder, how much more can I take? And in the middle of all of that, that's exactly how the Israel felt. And the Lord said, I want you to sing a new song. I want it to be a fresh song. So here's the picture. Let's, let's apply it to ourselves. We're standing here today in his presence. And man, I feel his presence. Thank you, God. And we give him praise. And we worship him. And Andrea sang a new song a few minutes ago. I mean, she just, that just came from the inside. She began singing that new song to the Lord. So this passage says, here's it in context, that if I can get to that place and I'm singing a new song, then those pressures, those storms, those difficulties, those uh, uh, satanic attacks that are coming to destroy me, that God says, I'm going to send my warring angels, my emissaries, and I'm going to stand between you and that oppression that's coming on you, and I'm going to bring victory into your life. And we say, well, Lord, how, uh, why, why would you do that? And he would simply say, because I've heard the new song that you're singing. I've heard the new song that you're singing. That's what he wants us to see. I mean, when we think about singing, here's the first fill-in today. Singing is to be an expression of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. If you're full of the Holy Spirit, you know, you ever see, I, I, I've never... Uh, I've never been drunk, so I, I don't know how that goes, but some of you have a personal uh, testimony you could share. But I've seen people full of a spirit and not the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> and they may be shy and backwards, but if they get enough spirit in them, you know, they just carry on. They don't worry about what anybody thinks. Somebody says, you're embarrassing me. Hey, get away from me. I'm feeling good, right? Uh, I hope I don't bring flashbacks for some of you and you leave today. <laughs> but here's what I'm saying. If you're full of the Holy Spirit, there's going to be a song that's going to come out of you. Listen to this, Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, and making music to the Lord with your hearts. He says, I want you to sing this song, these songs, but I don't want you to sing them just from your mouth. I, I don't want you to just sing them because they're ingrained in here and you can sing them here. But I want it to come from your heart. And it's not for people that are standing. Some people say, well, you know, I just don't sing out during the song time because I don't sing well. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't want people to think bad. Who cares? Are you singing to them? Are you, I'm not singing to people around me. Uh, you know, I get offbeat. Some of those songs are hard for me, and I'm ready to sing when they're quiet. And I, so I'm a little quiet because I don't want to embarrass. But, you know, I'm, I'm not singing to you. I'm singing to him. I'm singing to him about that amazing grace. I'm singing to him about that it is well with my soul. I'm singing to him when I talk about what a friend I have in Jesus. I'm singing to him when I talk about one of these days, I'm going to fly away. I'm out of here, all right, Jack? I'm out of here, and then I'll come back with the Lord to a new heaven and a new earth. Can you say amen? amen. So he says, I want you to sing psalms. The psalms are simply when we sing scriptures. You know, uh, years ago, uh, part of the Hosanna, integrity music, they sang a lot of, of, of uh, psalms. 
sing hymns. Him is just songs that we write that talk about him. See, a hymn is not something we think, well, you know, I hear people say, I think we ought to sing more hymns. What are you saying? Well, you know, like those the real church hymns. What's that? And it's not because it was written years ago that makes it a hymn. When he's talking the word here, a hymn is any song that we would write that talks about him, that gives him glory and honor. So when I told Andrea the other day, I said, when you as a worship team begin to write songs, I don't want you to write songs about where we are now, but I want you to write songs about where we are 10 years, where we're going to be 10 years from now. And then let's sing ourselves into that destiny, into that place that God has for us. That's a new song that we began singing, all right? And then he says, and I love this phrase, sing, he says, I want you to sing spiritual songs. Well, what's a spiritual song? Well, a spiritual song is a spontaneous response to God. A spontaneous response to God. The actual Greek here can really help us. Uh, the Greek here is ode pneumotikos, which means, listen to this, songs of the breath of God. The Holy Spirit dwells within us, right? God. So I come to a mountaintop. Man, everything's great, and I'm rejoicing. Then, then this song, this ode of pneumotikos, is just a song that comes up out of my heart through the Holy Spirit. And I may just say, thank you, Lord. Oh, I worship you. I praise you. You're so good to me. I just, you know, ride my motorcycle or walking in a room. I, I just, Lord, I worship you. And that's what I'm doing. It, I didn't write it. It just came up out of me. Or maybe I'm in a crisis time. And maybe it's, it's a fearful time, as Andrea said. And it just seems like everything is coming against me. And it's at that time that I just began raising up a song from the Holy Spirit within me that sings about it. Listen, he says, I want you to shout that song. I want you to be loud. I never read in Psalms and the other where he says, I want you to sing quietly. But yet we have people say, this church is too loud. It's loud for a reason. Because God said, I want you to shout. I believe music should be felt as much as it is heard, all right? And so we supply earplugs if you, if you need earplugs. But there's, a, there's something to that. We just feel like that God says, I want you to shout that worship. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't times that we do a cappella and we sing with just the guitar and then the bongo drums that Mike beats on or that box that he sets on, all right? We do that. There's a place for that. But there's also a place for us to get loud. And, and I'm not saying you have to do it here and you feel, I'm just so embarrassed I could do that. Get home. Sing a loud song to the Lord. Shout loudly to the Lord. Get in your car driving down the road. I mean, like, like when you used to go to some of those parties and they were playing music loud and you was popping up and down then. And you can't pop up and down in church. Uh, look, I will never, listen to me, I will never shout louder for a sports team or some band that doesn't know me than for a God that saved me and redeemed me and has a purpose for my life. So he says, I want you to, and then sing with the Spirit. That just means sing out of the season that you're in. Sing out of the season that you're in. Now, point number two is this. Singing brings forth a new thing. Singing brings forth a new thing. And I come back to this passage, all right? Look at, look at verse 9. Verse 9. This is God speaking, and he says, you know, they're praying, Lord, do something new. This old is about to kill me. Behold, the former things have come to pass. He said, in other words, the past is the past. I'm getting ready to do something new. I don't know if you can sense it, but in both services today, there's been such an anointing of newness. It's like God is saying, I'm doing something new. I'm doing, I mean, we're not looking for revival. We're in revival. 
When we have seven or eight people per service that give their heart to the Lord, when we have 50-some men show up on a Saturday morning for a, for a breakfast, when we sense the presence of God that we're sensing right now, that's not a revival to come. That's a revival now. But some of us think, well, I'm looking for a revival, an old-fashioned revival like we used to see. Look, the old is the old. I don't want to repeat the old. I want to build on the old and experience the new revival that God has coming on our way of signs, wonders, and miracles for His glory. It says, Behold, the former things have come to pass, new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. Here's God. He says, I heard your prayer, and I'm getting ready to do something new. That entire uh, uh, chapter 42 is a messianic psalm. And in fact, if you look back up, I think it's verse 7. He says, I'm going to open blind eyes. I'm going to bring the prisoners out of prison. Those who sit in darkness, I'll bring them out of that. Verse 16, I'll bring the blind by a way they don't know. Isn't it amazing how God has brought you to him in a way that you never know? You say, I can't believe how God brought me to him. I can't believe how God brought me to the Father's house. It's just sort of like he did all this, and I could have never figured that out of what he was doing. And he says, I will lead you in paths that you have not known. I'll make darkness light before you, and I'll make crooked places straight. These things I will do for you. So he says, I'm going to do all these things for you, but before I do them, listen to this. I want you to align your heart to receive what I have for you. And here's what he says to them. After verse 9, I'm going to do something new. Here it is. It's going to spring forth. And then in verse 10, he says, but here's the condition. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to begin to sing a fresh, new, renewed, built song to the Lord. Now, if you just won the lottery, it wouldn't be hard to write a new song, would it? Oh, hallelujah, I won a million. I can tithe and I can do this. Oh, hallelujah, like that. It's not hard. It's not hard to write a great song when your dreams are fulfilled, when you find the man of your dreams. <laughs> those, are not hard, those are not hard songs to write. But this song for them is different. They're in a dark place. It's a troubled place. It's a difficult place. And they're asking God to do something new. And God says, okay. The past is over. New things are getting ready to happen. Now I want you to sing a new song to the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. That's, my, that's, my, that's the word that I have burning in my heart for you today. You, you've been praying, God, do something new. God, change this, change that, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Set my free. Uh, save, my, save my friends. Save my loved ones, Lord. Do that. Lord, do something. And he says, I'm, I'm waiting. I want to do that. But I want you to get your heart aligned with what I'm about to do. And I want you to begin. You see, he's, what he's saying is, I've said it. Now I want you to say it. But I want you to do more than say it. I want you to sing it. I want you to sing it. I, I, I don't know. Why, why didn't he just say, well, just stand up and prophesy? I don't know. It's something about God. He likes music. And he likes songs. And if you don't, if you don't like loud music, you better not go to heaven. You get a ticket to go to the other place, all right? But in heaven, it's going to be loud. That's what it says. In heaven, there was a loud sound. There was loud music. I, well, we all have good ears then, so it won't bother us, okay? So, so that'll help us. I, I, I don't want to be abusive in that area. But he says, I want you to begin singing. Think, think about it like this. Remember, remember Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16? For witnessing to God, they've been severely flogged, thrown in prison. And the jailer was commanded, you better keep them and not let them go. So they took their hands and they took their feet and they chained them up. After they've been beaten, them, their, their back is just bloody and, 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 and open because of the beating. But about midnight, Acts 16 says, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening, and suddenly there was a violent earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken, and at once the prison doors were open, and everybody's chains came off. Now, I, I heard an old preacher do it like this, and I thought I'd try to mimic it, but I, I, couldn't give it, I couldn't give it the good shot. So let me just read it to you, all right? Here, here's what he said. 
Maybe it was something like this. Paul, are you okay? Sure, Silas. I'm just rubbing my sore back up against this moist jail wall, trying to get some relief because it really hurts. Paul, do you think they'll kill us? I don't know, Silas. I can't think about that right now. There's something coming up in my chest, and it's overtaking me. What is it, Paul? I'm not sure, Silas, but it feels like a new song. Silas, I feel like a new song that's coming up within me. Yeah, Silas says, yeah, I, I, I feel it too, Paul. Here, here it comes. Uh, let's, let's let it rip. Let's let that new song rip. And then the new song rose up, flew out of the cell bars into the next cells. The new song went up out of the jail and hit the atmosphere. The new song kept rising into the ionosphere, the stratosphere, and all the other spheres until the father bent his neck and said to an angel, what is it I hear, angel? Ah, oh, sir, that's just music. That's pretty common around here, just music. No, angel, this is different. Sorry. Somebody just sent me a text in the middle of my, in my notes. <laughs> Get behind me, devil. Here we go. <laughs> oh, sir, that just sounds like music, but that's pretty common here. No, angel, this is different. This sounds new. It's kind of a new song. And the father couldn't restrain himself any longer. He loved the sounds of the new song so much, he started tapping his foot. Since the earth is the Lord's footstool, the earth reacted pretty violently when it felt the tap of the father, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so the very foundations of the prison were shaken, and at once all the doors were open and everyone's shackles were unfaced, unfastened because they sing a new song unto the Lord. Amen. Yeah. So let's apply that to us. This afternoon or tomorrow or this week, you're driving down the road. Somebody sends you a message. Well, they're downsizing our job. And then fear comes. Well, what am I going to do if I lose my job? Or maybe you're on your way to the doctor's office and the enemy says, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be bad. You're going to get a bad report. It's going to be the big C word. It's going to be cancer. It's going to come. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's going to be tough. You're, you're financially going to be broken. But here's what happens. So often when those things come upon us, then we start, we start lamenting. Oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to handle this? What am I going to do? I, I just don't know how I'm going to, what, what am I going to, and so we, instead of singing a new song to the Lord, we just begin singing those old laments. You see, the devil can't read your mind, but he can hear what you say and what you're saying. One thing just perturbs him to no end is that when he punches you and punches you and punches you and punches you, that you don't fall to your knees and whine, oh, God, why me? Why me, God? I can't believe it's happened to me. But when you stand up and you say, Lord, I praise you today. I'm not defeated. I'm not going under. I'm going over. I thank you, God. The devil can't stand that. We begin to throw back at him everything that he's throwing at us. Wow, picture this. Picture this. You're driving down. We say we're for our neighbors in our community. Picture this. We have fear. We have crime. We have school shootings. All of those things that are going on. And that's what everybody's talking about. I can't believe this, and I can't believe that, and I can't believe something else. And, and, and our hearts were saying, Lord, we need you to do something new in Central Florida. We need, you, we need something new to happen in our schools and, and, and with marriages and with lives. And, and Lord, we just, we just need you to do something new. So what, can you, what would it be like if we took this scripture literally the way that it is and then we'd leave out of here and when we, when we drive through Central Florida that we just start singing a new song to the Lord? Not a woe is me, but just something like this. Lord, I give you thanks. For you are my redeemer, Lord. 
You are the healer, Lord, and you're turning the poverty of this community into your riches, God. You're sending renewal, Lord. You're strengthening marriages, Lord. You're helping our kids in school, Lord. You are a God, and you've never taken your eyes off of us. And I sing over our community with your prosperity and your blessings. And here's what will happen. The Lord will begin rousing himself, and he said, I want you to go, and I want you to change some, change some thinking in people that is in that community. And I want you to begin to let them to see that the love of Jesus is greater than all the difficulties. Now, that doesn't mean when we sing a new song, that doesn't mean that we won't have difficulty. Some of you, some of you in the last weeks or so, have you, you, you prayed and cried something like this to God. Why, God? Why'd you let this happen? How long? How long, Lord, will this continue to go on? I just don't understand, Lord. It, it's, just, it's just not fair. We all have questions, but that has nothing to do with singing a new song. I will never sacrifice the goodness of God on the altar of human reasoning. Some things won't be explained to us in this life. I have challenging questions people ask me, and I just have to say, I don't know. There's no explanation. But you see, when I understand how good he is, I don't need an explanation. I just know he's good. I just know he's good. You know, in fact, when David took Goliath's head off, you know what he used to take it off? He took Goliath's sword. I challenge you today with me. I'm preaching to me. Let's take all the crap that Satan's trying to put on you, and let's pick it up, and let's, instead of carrying it, let's drop it, and let's begin worshiping God in the midst of that, singing a new song, and seeing what God would do. Do you remember in 2 Chronicles 20? I didn't do this in the first service. In 2 Chronicles 20, let me go there real quick, all right? In 2 Chronicles 20, this is a time that Jehoshaphat and, and all of Israel is surrounded by the, the Moabites, the Ammonites, uh, and all the other ites. And so Jehoshaphat goes and he falls before God and he cries out before God. It says in verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Lord, it's an impossible situation. I don't know what to do, but I know you got it all in control. I, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you got it under control. And then the Lord gives him a word in verse 15, don't be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And then he says in verse 17, you won't need to fight in this battle, but position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. You see, sometimes the Lord doesn't want you to war anymore in the Spirit. Sometimes he doesn't want you to get fatigued, warring, and putting on the full armor. You, you've been fighting so long. He's saying to somebody today, you've been fighting enough. It's a time of rest. I want you to find a place in me, and I want you to begin rest in me. And I want you to begin singing, because listen to what he said to them. Listen to this, verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise the Lord set ambushments against all of the others and destroyed them. And then in verse 25, they went and picked up all the jewels and everything that's there. I didn't say this in the first service, so it must be for somebody that's here, somebody's watching online. You've worn yourself out fighting about something and worrying about something. You've spent hours crying and weeping. You're really struggling. And you fought, and you've, you've, you've really been praying. And the word of the Lord to you is simply this today. Just rest. Rest in me. And to begin singing a new song. Not of what's gone wrong, but of his faithfulness and what he's about to do. I ask Andrea to gather me some songs of some, some, some people, just a new song. And so this was written by someone here that recently had a loss in their family. This is a new song that was written out of the pain, out of the season. The pain takes my breath away, but I know I'll see you in glory. What do I do now that you're gone? What do I do when I have no song? I will lift my hands to a loving God who fights for me. 
I will cry these tears. He's numbered like the grains of the sand. I know his thoughts are always on me. I am not forgotten. I know he holds me. I know I'm hidden, safe in his hands. Wow. But you can't write songs like that if you hadn't had stuff come against you. That's all of these songs. It is well with my soul. What a friend we have in Jesus. All came out of stuff that the enemy threw. Let's rise up and let's do something new. Here's your homework for this week. Here it is, all right? Here's your homework. On the bottom there, it says, next step, write it down. I'm going to ask you this week to write a new song, your song. doesn't have to be long. doesn't have to be short. doesn't have to be musical. It could be barely legible. But I want you to write it down. I w- then, after you write it down, I want you to get in a place alone. And I want you to read it back to God. I promise you, when you do that, God will be saying, how sweet the sound. I like that song. Because it'd be so easy for you to just to give up and quit. But I believe he'll start tapping his foot. I believe he'll send the enemy running because you sing a new song. Let's bow our heads this morning. Some of you may be here watching online and you simply say, say, Terry, I, uh, I don't have any hope to be able to sing a new song because I know I'm living far away from what God wants me to live. Maybe you used to be close to him and living on purpose, but Stuff happens. And sometimes it's stuff on top of stuff and disappointment on top of disappointment. And we just quit. We lose our soul. But here's a question I'd ask you today. If you were to die today, do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you would spend eternity with the Lord? You say, well, Terry, how can I know that? Do I, do I just do good works? Do I give to the church? What do I do? I, was, I, I really would like to know my eternity is settled. I'd, I'd like to spend eternity with, with God in heaven and then on the new earth. Well, God knew there'd be times like that that we would question, like, how much do I have to do? What do I have to do to make that? But God, being a holy God, knew that we were sinful people. We could never get close enough to him. So God loved us so much that he said, I've got to make a pathway for them that's easy. So he sent of himself his only son to die on the cross. Jesus was born sinless. Wow, I can't even imagine. He was born sinless. But he went to the cross, and my sins and your sins were placed upon him. The pain that he bore was not the sins of himself, but yours and mine. And when he died, he said, it is finished. I paid the penalty for every sin that you would ever commit. Then on the third day, he rose again that we could have a new life, a new fresh beginning. And the only way, the only thing that he says is, I just want you to accept paid in full. Stop trying to do it yourself. Paid in full is what he said. He said, well, I'd like that deal. How do I get in on it? He said, well, if I confess him as my Savior and Lord, if I invite him into my heart, He would be my Savior, and He would live in me, and the penalty of my sins would be paid in full, no more debt. So yeah, I'd I'd like to get in on that deal. So here's what I'm going to do. Just a minute, I'm going to ask you if that's you, and you say, you know what, I need need to get in on that deal. I, I need a Savior. I know I need a Savior today. I've been driving the bus, and It's not going the right direction, so I need to turn over this steering wheel and let Jesus take the wheel. I can give you the words, but you have to give the heart. Just like we can sing songs from our mouth and not from our heart, you can say words from your mouth, but what God is looking for is people say it with their heart. Not just to make a reservation in heaven and escape hell, but to live a life that would be pleasing unto Jesus. So if you're here today, 
and you say, Terry, would you include me in that prayer? Would you help lead me in that prayer today? I want to start new today. I want today to be a new day for me. Uh, here's what I'd like you to do, just like the seven or eight people in the first service did. I'd like you to just raise your hands. Just raise it so I can see you. Raise it high so I can see you where you are. Say, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you over here. Thank you in the back. Thank you. Others, just raise your hand. I'll make eye contact with you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you in the back. Thank you. The greatest decision you'll ever make. The greatest decision that you'll ever make in your life. Or maybe you'll say, you know what, Terry, I once was serving the Lord, but I've just kind of got distracted, but I'd like to start anew today. Would you just honestly raise your hand and make eye contact with me and say, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me lead you in a prayer. Those of you over here and here and here and here and over here, raise your hand, pray this prayer with me, and we'll all pray it with you because we've all prayed a prayer like this at one time or another. Let's pray this together. Father God, thank you for not giving up on me. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. I realize I could never get holy enough to come into your presence because I'm a sinner. And I thank you, Jesus, that you took the penalty of my sins so that I could come to God today. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Be my Savior. And be my Lord. As best as I know how, I want to serve you the rest of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Now, church, the scripture says that in heaven, all the angels rejoice over one sinner who repents and comes to God. And in this service, we had about eight or nine people that raised their hands. So let's celebrate today. Amen. Eight is not a number that we celebrate. The number eight represents eight people's eternities that have been changed today because of you, because you as a church are here today, because of your prayers, because of your giving, because of your participation in this service today, because of that, eight or nine lives, and today it's about 18 people's destinies have been changed because of this church. In just a moment, we're going to receive our tithe and our offering. I'm going to ask you to watch a little video of another testimony, great testimony. But those of you who just prayed that prayer with me, would you take that connection card and uh, would you fill as much information on that as you feel comfortable with? And on the back it says, today I became a first-time follower of Jesus or recommitted my life to Jesus. And would you bring that card at the end of the service out to the Next Steps table? Just drop by. And they have a book they want to give you. Uh, and if you don't have a Bible, they want to give you a Bible. And uh, you don't have to say anything. Or you can say, hey, I pray that, pray today, and just give them that connection card. And everybody else, we drop the connection card in with our tithe and offering in just a minute. But as you prepare to do that, uh, please don't leave just yet. We want, we want to sing a little bit of this great song, How Great Thou Art. But watch this, uh, watch this uh, testimony from Amanda. My name is Amanda Gibson. I am freshly engaged to Morgan Bradford. I've been going to the Father's House since 2015, but I've been a covenant partner since September of 2016. And I'm blessed to be serving in the baby room every Sunday at 11 o'clock. And looking forward to that is what gets me through my work week, is being there with them on Sunday morning. So in January of this year, Pastor Terry spoke on the importance of tithing and I had remembered at an early age in life, my father going through a hard time and 
um, he opened up his Bible and found four $100 bills. And he looked at me and he was like, Amanda, the Lord promises good to you. And that's just always settled with me. But I'd never had it applied to my own life. So that morning, that Sunday morning, I made the choice. I was like, I had been giving on Sundays, but I haven't really been given the full 10%. So at that Sunday, I took Pastor Cherry's challenge and it has just changed my life. Eight weeks later, my bank account, I had hundreds of extra dollars in there. I couldn't begin to describe what all happened after that. I've had credits made to my son's daycare bill. I've had anonymous um, reimbursements on car repairs. I've had marriage conferences bought for me and my fiance. And I mean, I could just go on and on and on with all the miraculous works that the Lord has worked through my life after I continued to tithe faithfully. And once I made that decision to tithe faithfully and honor the Lord, I will never go back. I just, my life has changed and it will never be the same. Wow, thank you, Amanda. Thank you. It's like Al said the other day, we don't give to get, but we give because he's asked us to give and it's a way of us putting him first. So as you present your tithe and then your offering today, and then we drop in our change that goes to help. We're going to help the teachers next door in the fall as they get back. So uh, let's pray our tithe prayer together. Are you ready? Lord, receive our tithes and offerings as an expression of our love and obedience to you. We thank you, Lord, for all you have given us. We are provider of all things. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs. Help us to be good stewards of all you have given us that we might give into your kingdom and to promote the truth of the gospel throughout the earth. Amen. Here's what we're going to do. The ushers are coming. They're going to pass the bucket. You can drop in the tithe and offering. If you're not ready to give today, you can use that giving envelope. It's postage paid. Drop in your change. It's going to help the teachers next door. Please don't leave. I want to come back and release a blessing over you. But we just got to sing this last song, How Great Thou Art, as a holy, sweet song unto God. Oh. Thanks for joining us today for this great teaching and I believe it was very impactful to you. I love this series as we're looking at the hymns of the church and, and they've ministered to people for years but I believe today's really spoke to you. In fact, I'm so excited to just think about that Jesus loves us so very much and he has a plan for our life. Uh, you're not an accident but you're on purpose. And um, I would just encourage you, if you've never surrendered your heart to the Lord, if you've never made him Lord of your family, I'd love to lead you in a prayer today to make that decision. Would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I turn over my life to you. I realize that you died for my sins and you rose on the third day to give me new life, a fresh start. 
And as best as I know how, I want to serve you the rest of my life. I pray that today in Jesus' name. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me today, I have a book that I want to give you. If you just call the church office and let them know, hey, I'd like to have that book. I I gave my heart to the Lord. Then we'll be able to send that to you. And if you don't have a Bible, just let us know. I'll be happy to send you a Bible because that Bible is going to give you direction for your life. I want you to know that we love you and we thank you so much for joining us. I would like to say if you have a prayer request, you can also leave that at the church office when you call. And if you, this ministry has been a blessing to you, I would really encourage you to just ask God what he would have for you to invest in this ministry. That we can continue to spread the gospel. That we can continue to keep our missionaries on the field and make a difference because Jesus is coming very soon. Listen. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll be watching every week with us here at the Father's House because we don't really care where you've been. We care where you're going. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next week.